Good morning, Coy Assembly family, and those of you that are friends of our family that are watching online with us this morning, we welcome you to the service that we have for you this, this morning at the AM service for Coy Assembly of God. I'm sorry that I am babbling. I'm still not used to all this online stuff. Um, I'm an interactive person, so do what you can and interact with me and interact with the Lord uh, during this time that we have together. One, a couple of things that I wanted to point out to you today. Uh, this afternoon is another s significant chance of, of rough weather, bad weather, uh, possible tornadic activities. And so we want you to be prepared for that. We want you to be aware of that coming up. Make, um, make yourself uh, in a, aware so that you can take the proper precautions to, to be ready for that situation should it arise. And also, next Sunday morning, we are planning a drive-in service for our regular service time. And like I said, per weather permitting, we've been canceled a couple times on that, trying to do it, but we're praying for a pretty weekend next weekend so that we can do that. Get outdoors a little bit, let you drive in, stay in your cars, uh, follow the precautions and the guidelines, but uh, it'll be something uh, new for us to do and to try, and so we're working to get that for you next week. We'll give you some announcements on that a little bit later on. Today I'm super excited for you to join us in service. Um, as we've said before, you're there, we're here, but the Lord is both places. So I want you to open up your heart. I want you to jump into worship. I want you to pull your Bibles out, take notes, do everything that you would normally do here in church. And if you don't do any of that here in church, then start doing it, okay? Start doing it, all right? There should be some laughing going on at this time, all right? So anyway, we're about to jump into worship this morning, sing several songs for you and worship or sing them for the Lord and worship to him. Um, and then we're going to bring the word this morning. And I hope that you have prepared your hearts ready for this service and what the Lord is going to bring. So would you go to the Lord with me in prayer? God, we love you and we only want to be what you want us to be. We only want to do what you want us to do, Lord. Today is a day that we would normally be meeting together. But today is a day that we're meeting in separate places, Lord Jesus. But you're there with us both, here and there, God. And I pray that your glory would fall exactly where, where everyone is, Lord Jesus. Because you're our God. You're our big enough God that you can fall in every place, every home, every heart, every mind, every spirit. In this world, Lord Jesus, you can do it all at once. And I pray that you would have a Holy Ghost move inside homes today, Lord Jesus, as we proceed through this service and we're obedient to you and what you want us to do and sing and say this morning, Lord. We pray that you would be in full movement today, Lord Jesus, and that you would tear other hearts down, Lord, every, every idol down, Lord Jesus, God, and, and that you would take its place. In your name I pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Would you worship the Lord with us this morning?
love the Lord? Are you thankful for the Lord? If you are, you should be showing it right now. You should be expressing your love and your thanks and your praise to the God who saved you from your sins. And maybe you might be the one today who has not been saved from their sins, but you can find that, that rescue today in the rescuer named Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to sing one more song for you this morning or to Jesus this morning. Worship him with us, will you please? thankful to you God because no matter how we feel Lord you still deserve to be praised 
no matter what we do in life, how we mess up in life, Lord Jesus, we still, do, you, we still should honor you and praise you, Lord, and you still deserve our praise, Lord Jesus. And no matter what goes on in our life, Lord, no matter the, the situation or the trial that we find ourselves in, Lord, you still deserve our praise and we honor you today lord and we thank you today god because you're a god of constant you're a god of faithfulness you're a god who is always there for us you're our source you're our everything lord jesus and i'm thankful god to you today for being those things to me and so much more lord but i'm thankful to you today for everything that you've done for me and for everything that you've done for this world this human race god hallelujah Thank you for your sacrifice that we talked about last week. Thank you, God, because you rose from the dead and you are still alive and you are still living today and you are sitting in the, on the throne at the right hand of the Father, Lord. Thank you so much for being alive. Thank you so much for not being a God that will not answer us, that, that does not hear us and will not answer us, Lord. You are alive and you hear us and you answer with us and you communicate with us and you, you have relationship with us, God, and I'm so thankful to serve a God who has those abilities. Hallelujah. Today, Lord, we understand that there are many uncertainties. We understand that we all have needs in our lives, some greater than others, Lord Jesus, but you care about each one of them, whether it's a scrape on the knee or whether it's cancer or whether it's a life-threatening situation, Lord Jesus, that is, is irreversible without a miracle, Lord Jesus. You care about each and every need. And I pray right now, God, those needs that you're aware of, some of them that, that we're all aware of, them, some, some of those needs, Lord, that most of us are not aware of, some of them are private needs, some of them are, are silent needs, Lord, but they're still needs nonetheless, God. I pray right now that you would move according to your glory. I pray right now that you would move according to your will for, for those situations and those people and their lives, Lord Jesus, and that you would do what needs to be done in each and every one of those situations, Lord Jesus. So we offer them to you. We're in agreement with these people, whether we understand them or not, whether we know them or not. We're in, in agreement with everyone that has a need this morning, God, because we all have a common need, Lord Jesus, and that need is you, and you are the source. You are the fix. You are everything that we could ever need or ever want, Lord, and so I pray right now that your healing would go out. I pray right now that your power would go out. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that your glory would go out, Lord, and it would manifest itself in each and every one of these situations, God, and that it would accomplish what you sent it to accomplish, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you again, Lord, and we're thankful to you again for your mighty, mighty, mighty power. And there is no other name, Lord Jesus, that is greater than yours. And we acknowledge that today. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for that worship time. I'm so thankful for that time of, of prayer. And, and I know it's not hands-on prayer like we're used to, but I believe the Lord has heard your, your request. He already knew your need, and he is already in the process of answering that prayer. And so would you believe that with me this morning? Amen. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to bless the Lord with your giving. Um, we, we still need the tithe. We still need the offering. We still have things to do. We still have um, events to, to plan. We, we will eventually get over this, this coronavirus, this pandemic, as it's been labeled. Um, but even with that going on, we still need to be faithful to the Lord. And so I want to ask you to be faithful to the Lord. Tanner is going to play a song for us. It would be a good time for you to log on online. The link should be in the comments section. Uh, or you can just text the word GIVE to 601-300-6140, and that's available to you. And always don't forget, if you would rather just mail it to Miss Ann's house, the address is 719 J.C. Warren Road, Preston, Mississippi, 39354. Thank you, and God bless you as you give.
Amen. Thank you, Tanner. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, sure, I help to me, and I help to the Lord in this time. Um, and I'm thankful for both of you. I'm thankful for you all who tune in every every week Sundays. Um, We'll have service tonight, 6 o'clock. Uh, you can tune in live to the church page again, and it will more than likely be from my home since the weather is, is going to be getting rough. And if, the, if we lose power, just pray. If we lose power, just do your own Bible study at home. Um, but pending something like that happening, we will um, have service tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, I was just saying thank you to Tanner and Caitlin. And I want to say thank you to everybody um, for being consistent. Thank you for those who have continued to give your tithe and your offering. Thank you to those who have called and checked on us. Um, we are trying our best to check on people, uh, multiple people every day, and, and just trying to touch base with everybody to find out if, if there are folks out there that may need something that the church can help get them or that I can run something over to them or run to the store and get a, a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread, uh, something like that. If you know somebody that we've not been in touch with that is in need of some of those things, just text me, uh, call me, and let me know. Um, we'll try our best to, to help out, uh, especially our people, those that are in need, uh, our, our, our older people that can't get out and get those things for themselves. I know many of them have family. To, to help with that, and so I, I thank you, family, for helping with that. But if there's someone that, that may not, that we've accidentally overlooked, I, I hope that you would let me know that so that we can help get the provisions that they need. Um, in saying thank you, I want to say thank you to um, someone this morning, which I, you know, I won't call their name because I, don't, I didn't ask them about tooting their horn. And, and so uh, it's not about that for this person. I understand that. I know that. But when I walked in this morning, uh, came through the front door and I began to make the way to my office. I came around the front and I'm sitting here looking and there's little signs that's posted on the front row. And, and so I, I just want to read some of those signs. Those signs were encouraging. And I'm sorry if I'm getting out of the frame a little bit. Um, but uh, thank you for all you do. Praying for you. We love you. Keep praising the Lord. Thank you for stretching uh, we see lots of Jesus in you. We are farmers only, hashtag farmers only fans. Um, thank you for the encouragement. Just a, a number of different signs there that were encouragement to me. And so when I walked in this morning, I was moved almost completely to tears. Um, my spirit was stirred, and, and I was so thankful for the encouragement. So um, I think I figured out who it was. Um, so... Just know that I'm appreciative of that because I, and I need those compliments too. And so uh, don't feel guilty or anything like that. that. That's not the reason why I said that. I, I just wanted to say that um, thank you because people, everybody needs encouragement. Everybody needs compliments. And, and so thank you so much, um, whoever that was or, or those people were. And so if you'll turn with me to the book of John chapter 3. And a few weeks ago, we talked about Nicodemus, the story of Nicodemus out of John chapter 3. And I know you're thinking, oh, Lord, that boy loves John chapter 3. Well, I do love John chapter 3. Matter of fact, I love the whole Bible. You should try it. You, you'd fall in love with it as well. Um, but we're going to move past that Nicodemus story. Obviously, a few weeks ago, we did talk about Nicodemus. And we talked about how he was a teacher of the law and how... It astounded Jesus. It just took him back that this guy was supposed to be teaching people the law. He was supposed to be very smart, yet he could not understand how one must be born again. And so after explaining that to him and, and getting him on the right path, we find ourselves picking up right about verse 22 this morning. And so I'm going to be reading that through the end of the chapter, which is verse 36. So if you will, <clears throat> would you... Look to the word and read this story with me. Starting with verse 22. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Anan near Salim because there was plenty of water and people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. 
an argument developed between some of John's disciples, a certain Jew over the matter, and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one that you testified about, well, he's baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, a man can only receive what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater, I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom, I, whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. So whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on Him. Father, we love you today. We're asking you with help. Help to understand this scripture. Help to understand what we need to do. Help to understand how to apply this to our lives, Lord Jesus. We're doing nothing for you, Lord, if we're not applying this life, th these words to our life and, and helping others for you, God. So I pray that as we walk through this this morning, we'll understand it, God. Not just understand it, but we'll apply it, Lord. And not just apply it, go out and use it, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you for this opportunity to break apart your word. And I ask that you would give me only the things that you want me to say, Lord. Nothing more and nothing less. We love you. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So, like I mentioned earlier, a few weeks ago, we studied and discussed the story of Nicodemus. <clears throat> but our scripture this week, we're talking about increasing. We're talking about growing in God. And, and I have a similar, we've talked about this on a similar to topic before. And so, the Lord has just placed this in my heart this week as a burden. I began to pray, Lord, what is it that, that I can do to be a better Christian? And what is it that I can do to be a better man of God? What is it that I can do to be a better pastor, a better husband, a better father? What is it that I can do to be a better friend? And I ask you, to whatever applies to your life, to ask the Lord, what is it that I can do to be greater for you, to be better for you? That's a question we all have to ask ourselves. It's a question we must ask ourselves daily. <clears throat> and so this week when I was asking the Lord that, he dropped this in my heart, this thought in my heart. I must decrease so he can increase. Immediately, I knew the story, and so I turned to the story, and I began to read through the story again in the scriptures, and it just all over again just jumped alive to me, off the page, into my spirit, just rang true. And so during this time of quarantine, we talked about this a few weeks ago too, ask the Lord what it is that he's trying to show you. And I believe that... Um, as direction for this church, this is one way that he is trying to show us direction for Koi Assembly of God is that we must become less so that he can become more. Right? This world is not about us. The Bible tells us that this life is not my own. It's not our own. It's his. It's just, we're just vessels for him to, be, to use to get his word out. And so if we understand that properly, we must understand that we can't have everything that we want and be everything necessarily that we want unless it agrees with his will for our life. If we're, we're doing that, then we're in the right position. But if we're not, then we're barking up the wrong tree. We're looking at the, 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 the wrong way with all this. So what I'm trying to tell you this morning is this. It's God's will for your life, not my will for my life. And if we can understand that, if we can grab that, we can reach this community. We can reach further than this community. This online stuff, man, we, we've had people from five or six different states tuning in. So the reach of this church is, is getting out, getting out through media. But that doesn't mean that we stop doing media when all this is over. We're going to continue to do the media broadcast. But when we get back in here, it's time for us to deploy and go back out. 
Yes, we're going to have service here, but you can minister out there. We can minister in here, but we can minister out there too. And so he has to increase, so we must decrease, <clears throat> right? And so anytime you want to increase, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime you want to increase in an area in your life, you have to do what? You have to take a look at it. You have to evaluate what's keeping you from getting where you want to get or knowing where you're supposed to be. How many times have you prayed, Lord, I want to do more. I want to be better. I want to be stronger. Lord, I, I, I just I want more of you. Well, how do you get that? How do you get the answer? How do you get the results that you're looking for? Well, you have to take an inventory of your life. You have to take an inventory of your spirit and you have to say, okay, this is good, this is bad. Or maybe, better yet, you just list everything that you're involved in in life and then ask the Lord, Lord, what do I need to keep and what do I need to let go of? You have to take an inventory and make room, okay? If something is already full, there's nothing that you can do there. There's nothing that the Lord can do. He cannot come in if you will not make room for him to come in. He will not make you stronger if you do not give him place to come into your life and make you stronger. You want to get deeper with the word of God? Well, then you have to move some things out. You have to rearrange some things out of your schedule to, to plan some time for the Lord. You have to make yourself available for the Lord to do great things in you and with you. And if you're not willing to do that, then you'll always just be here when you could be here. I've used an illustration like this before. Uh, you know, my brother's first car, my older brother's first car was a, a Ford Pinto. Have you ever seen a Ford Pinto? It's not a very attractive car, okay? At 15 years old, when he got his license, he needed to be <laughs> driving something that was super nice and super attractive. Okay, listen, a lot of you grew up like I grew up. You just got hand-me-downs. A lot of you grew up like... I grew up, I had to pay for my first vehicle and my second vehicle and every vehicle I've ever had, okay? And so as a teenager, that's hard to do. So you just kind of get what's given to you. Well, his first car was a Ford Pinto. And that thing was ugly. I mean, it was ugly. But as he got older, and just like you and me, as we get older, we manage our lives a little bit better. We manage our money a little bit better. And we can, we can progress from the Pinto into a different vehicle. He went from a Pinto into a, a, a GMC Sonoma. It's kind of like the S10 version of a Chevy, um, but it was nice. It had ground effects, and he got him some. He got him a little job, and he was paying for all this kind of stuff, and he wrecked it. And then he was back <laughs> to to nothing. And then so he got another car. And then and so as we manage our lives, we must understand that if we're to get greater, we got to give up some things to get greater. And it's the same way with the walk with the Lord. If we're to get greater, we got to give up some things that he's telling us to give up so that we can have the increase that he wants for us in our lives. So we're all about increase, aren't we? We are. We really are. Uh, we're going to eat so-and-so tonight. Um, porterhouse. We're going to eat berry seafood. We're going to eat this or that or the other. And so when I think about the increase... I haven't eaten all day. I'm not going to eat all day so I can eat as much as I can eat. We want the increase. We want to be able to take advantage of those things that are available to us. Except spiritually. We want all this stuff materially, this worldly stuff, the things that the world defines as good. But when, when we really sit down and take advantage of our inventory of our life, we're like here spiritually and we're like here materially. And we got that backwards. We want the increase, but we don't want the increase in the right areas of our life because we see that as decrease. I got to give this up. I got to give this up. If I'm going to get closer to God, then that means I got to quit doing this. I got to quit doing this. I got to quit listening to this. I can't spend my time doing this as much as I want to do this. And so we look at that as a negative thing rather than what it actually is being the positive thing. You have far greater treasure in your life the closer you are to God. The more things that he asks you to give up, the better you'll be when you give them up. The more stable Christian life you'll have when you give them up. The man of God, the woman of God that you desire to be, 
You'll have that once you begin to give up those things. And so we got to understand that we got to become less. Our desires have to become less. We've talked about this before. Uh, we're selfish people. We're selfish individuals. And that's just the way we are. And if we don't understand that, if we don't see that, then we can be very selfish. We can push people away with our actions. We can cause people to not like us because of, of how selfish and how inward motivated we are. It's all about me, 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 me. Well, other people can see that in you sometimes when you can't. And it's the same way with your life spiritually. Jesus can see that. God can see how selfish we are. God can see how, how much we need to change. And when he tells us that, we're just like, nah, that ain't no big deal. I never have felt like that before. You know, why, why should I give that up now? Why should I do something different? Well, because if you want the increase, if you want to become greater in his sight and for him, then you must decrease in your sight and with the things that you want to do in your life. We're all about the increase. I mean, who really doesn't like more? Good cannot and more importantly will not increase in your life if you do not make room for him. God is everything. We are nothing. That's the mentality that we have. My life is nothing if it has no God in it if, it, if it doesn't have the one true Savior in it. Let me just put it like that because there are gods that people claim that are gods that are not the right God. But if we want to be fruitful for the kingdom, then the more Jesus we have, the more Holy Spirit we have, the more fruit that we have and we display in our life. So we got to decrease so God can increase. Another example is a conversation... Um, that I've had with Lee and Dawn McDonald before. And I didn't ask them about this, so I apologize in advance if this embarrasses you. Um, but it's not really embarrassing. We want increase, right? I've heard a conversation between Lee and Dawn about their closet and the clothes that they have, the amount of clothes that they have. Well, they'll be shopping and they'll, you know, it'll be like, I want this, I want this, and this looks good. I think this will look good on you. I think this will go good in my wardrobe. Oh, this is cute, and this is that and the other. But they have an agreement. They have so many clothes that unless they get rid of an article of clothing, they can't bring another article of clothing in. Why? Because they don't have any room in their closet. They don't have any room in their closet for more. And so in order for us to grab the picture of this, you got to take some stuff out so that some more good stuff can come in. you got to remove some things that has been bothering God. you got to listen to his voice. And when he says move it, then you need to move it. When he says discard it, then you need to discard it. When he says throw it in the trash, take it to the burn pile, you need to do that. So that he can give you the good things that you're asking for. The good things that he knows that you need in your life. As Christians, we have to do the same thing with our walk for God. The goal is to get stronger. The goal is to mature in our faith. And trust in God. We should be climbing towards God, not sliding away from Him. And let me say this. If you don't get anything else this morning, let me say this. God is always moving. And He's always moving in the right direction, which means forward. Backwards is negative. Backwards is, is not a good thing. God is always moving forward. And if you are not moving with Him, then you're getting further away from Him. And that's not where you want to be. If you're not moving with God, then you're getting further away from God. And let me just take it a step further and say this. Even if you're not going the opposite direction, but you're standing still, paralyzed in fear because you don't know if you want to do this or not, you don't know if you want to take this next step in Him or not, you're still getting further away from Him because He's always moving. you got to move. Even if it's slow. Even if it's baby steps. That's okay. But you have to keep moving. Because you don't want to get further away from God. You just came from the farther away from place. You don't want to be back there again. That's the reason why you gave your life to Him. So if you're going to move, you need to move with God. Don't stand still and don't go back the other direction. Move with God in the direction that God is moving. And He will show you what He wants you to do. He will move with you and He will carry you and He will help you. He will strengthen you. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you knowledge. He'll give you discernment to continue moving and following Him. 
And so how do we do that? How do we get closer to God? I'm glad you asked. It's pretty simple, actually. We increase our exposure to Him. When the church meets, once we get to meet again, be there. It don't matter if we're just eating. Be there. Fellowship. The Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship and the assembling of the saints. Okay? How do we increase that? More time in here. More time in here. More time reading these words. This is the bread of life. This, this right here is, is our substance. This is, what, this is our food. This is our milk. This is our baby food. This is our meat and potatoes. You spend more time in this. And then another way you can draw closer to God and increase in God is sacrifice some more time, not just to read this, but some more time to spend some time on your knees in prayer or on your back in prayer or on your stomach in prayer or walking around in prayer. But you have to spend time with God. You have to be in the presence of God. If you're going to increase, if you're going to get stronger, if you're going to have a deeper walk with Him, then you're going to have to spend more time with Him. Doesn't that make sense? More equals more, doesn't it? More equals greater. The results of spending more time doing something helps you to get better. If you're an athlete, if you've ever been an athlete, that's why you went to practice. You practice hitting. You practice making those swings. You practice fielding the ball. You practice throwing the ball where you want it to go. Or whatever your sport is and whatever the details of your sport are, you practice those things so that you could get better. That means you move the laziness out of the way. That means that you move the thinking that I'll never be good enough out of the way. And you practice and you listen and you learn. You took coaching from somebody that was better than you at that sport so that you could become a greater athlete, be a better athlete, so that you could help your team more. And that's exactly what we have to do with God. We have to listen to Him. He's going to tell us the things that are bad for us. He's going to expose the things that, that causes Satan to, to be able to come in and tempt us and get us every time. He's going to reveal those things to us, and he's going to show us how to be a better player. He's going to show us how to be a better team member. Okay? It's pretty simple. Spending more time with God is the answer. To increase your exposure to God, you must read and study his word more. Capitalize, bold, italics, highlight it more. M-O-R-E. You have to spend more time with him. The more time you spend in conversation with him, the more you grow in him. John said it like this. He must become greater and I must become less. I'm reminded of another story in the scripture uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. And it reads like this. In the same way, you who are hungry... I'm sorry, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. And all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud, but shows favor for the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And so, let's break that down a little bit. Submit, it says. Submit. What does it mean to submit? You have to give yourself over. You have to yield yourself to the authority or the will of another. In other words, surrender. You have to surrender yourself. Not just part of it, not just this part of my heart, but all of my heart. I have to surrender everything to God. You have to clothe yourselves to put on something, to, to take it on. You have to humble yourselves. So what does that mean? Don't be proud. Don't be haughty is what it says. Not arrogant or assertive. To make humble in spirit or in like manner. Submit yourselves to who? The elders. Why does it say that, Pastor? So you can learn because they're supposed to understand enough and be seasoned enough spiritually to lead you, to guide you, to direct you in the, the, the areas and the direction that you need to grow in in your life. You need to submit yourself. Clothe yourself in humility. Again, why is that? Because God opposes the proud and shows favor to the humble. If you're not a humble person, if you don't submit your life to the Lord, then you can't make it to heaven. You can't serve God without being a humble person. There's no place in God's kingdom for me. There's no place in God's kingdom for an attitude that says me, 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 me. There's only place in God's kingdom for somebody that says it's not 
your will, but it's my it's not my will, but it's your will. Your kingdom come, not my kingdom. I don't have a kingdom. You're the great one. You're the holy one. You're the anointed one. You're the one that came and, and gave his life for me. You're my savior. You're, you're my everything. Submit yourself. Humble yourself. What does that mean? Kick your feet out from under yourself. Huh? Knock the stool out from under you that you're standing on and get less. Become less so that he can become greater in your life. And so uh, humble yourselves. Why? Because if you do that, when it's time, when he sees you're ready, He's going to lift you up. He's going to put you in the places that you need to be. You're looking for that new job. Maybe maybe you need a financial miracle. Have you humbled yourself before the Lord? Have you humbled yourself before the Lord? You need to find favor in your boss's eyes. You need to, to get out of a situation that you're in. Well, Have you humbled yourself before the Lord? I'm telling you, submit your ways to the Lord. Humble yourselves, and when it's time, He will promote you. He will give you the things that you need. Maybe, maybe not what you want, but he will give you the things that you need. John understood that Jesus was the man. We need to be like John. We need to understand that Jesus is the man. It's not Ryan the man. It's not you the man or woman. Jesus is the man. You're not living this life for your own pursuit of happiness. You're not living this life for your own purposes. You're living this life to be used as an instrument for God's purposes. To build the kingdom of God. John understood that Jesus was the man. He knew that he was to go ahead of him and point everybody towards him. Towards Jesus. He understood that. He knew that. He also knew that when he came that he would have to submit to him as well. Really he had already submitted to him because he knew. He was pointing people to the way. That way being Jesus. He already knew. He understood the process. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go before the Lord goes. And we're supposed to point people to the way of the Lord. To point people to the salvation, the kingdom. We're supposed to do that like John did. There was a dispute. You know, I mean, well, why is he, everybody's going over to him. He's baptizing. And John said, listen, I told you, you, you can attest, there's somebody coming after me. This is that somebody. Jesus is that man. I told you I wasn't worthy to unloose his sandals. This is the man. And when the bridegroom comes for the bride, then he, the, bride, the bride goes with the bridegroom. They go to him. That's what it is. That's what's happening right now. And he said, listen. In order for that to be more effective, I must become less so that he can become greater. If we can think and have John's mentality in this world, if we can say, I must become less so that God can be lifted up, so that Jesus can be exalted, then that's what we're supposed to be doing. And we'll point more people to God. We don't do that. Our ways and our philosophies and our thinking, even when we're trying to do it, sometimes we we try to do it our way. We have good intentions, but we're not doing it the right way. Mark Batterson says it like this in, in one of his books. He says that I would rather have one God idea than a thousand good ideas. The good ideas are good, and they'll no doubt reap some results. There'll be a harvest, no doubt. But... What would the harvest be if we sought God for the one God idea? What would it become? What could we become as a body of Christ if we would look to God for one God idea? And so we must become less and he must become greater. The same goes for you and I and everyone else that enters and exits this world. We will all proclaim one day that Jesus is Lord, whether you believe in him or not whether you're an atheist or an agnostic, whatever it is, I, I don't, it doesn't matter how much you oppose God or oppose Christianity. One day, the Bible says that all knees will bow and proclaim that He is Lord. One day that will happen. I want you to be on the right team when we are proclaiming that He's Lord. I want you to be on the good team, on God's team. Do you need Jesus? Yes. Everybody needs Jesus. Do you have Jesus? I don't know. That's a question that only you can answer. But you can answer it today. And you can get that settled today. 
We must point people to God. That's our, our calling. That's what he's placed us here to do, to glorify him and to build the kingdom. And so if you want to be a part of that, then you've got to get the mentality that John had. I have to decrease so he can increase. And that's in every area of our life. Every area of our life. As a matter of fact, before all of us became saved, we had to understand that we needed God more than we needed anything else. That he's the answer more than anything else that we've ever found. He is the answer. He is the way. The Bible says, he says that in the Bible, for I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father except through me, except through the Son. So we had to understand that we can't be even with God. We can't be higher than God. That's, uh, that's what Satan's problem. That's what got him kicked out of heaven. That's, that's what caused the rebellion. He wanted to be on the same level as, as God, and that's just not happening. So you see the result of that. He got kicked out of heaven. And the result today is that if we want to be close to God, then we got to be below him. We have to submit ourselves to him. We have to humble ourselves. And when it's time, he's going to make us who he wants us to be. He's going to lift us up. But you got to remember, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. He's always moving forward. And if we're, we're not moving with him, <laughs> I'm on my tiptoes for some reason. If we're not moving with him, then we're falling behind. Okay, we have to keep pace with God. And the more we keep pace with him, we do that by submitting ourselves and becoming less so that he can make us greater. For him, not for us, not for our own purposes, but so that we can become greater for him. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this word today. Um, let, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in a closing prayer. God, we love you. I'm so thankful for this word. I'm so thankful for a reminder of this word that you put on our hearts um, some time ago, Lord Jesus, we all need reminders. We all need to, to remember things that you've told us before because sometimes we can forget those things. So I'm thankful for this reminder today. I'm thankful for it being new to some people today, Lord Jesus. I'm thankful that your word never changes. He must become greater and I must become less. John understood it. We need to understand it. And if we can understand it and be on your team, then there's nothing that we can't do through you and in you. Jesus. So I pray today that if there's someone that was under the sound of this, this voice or, or, or participating in this service, God, that, that you would minister to their heart today, Lord. Reveal to them the need of you in their life. And I pray that you would help them make it right today, Lord Jesus. There are those of us that, that are already walking with you, Lord, that need to become less so that you can become greater in our lives. And I pray right now that you would let this message echo in their mind and in their spirit. I must submit myself i must become less so he can become greater lord we want that we want you to become greater in our lives so as we close this service today i pray that you would grab a hold of the hearts and the minds and the spirit of your people lord jesus those who don't know you lord let the holy spirit draw them even harder even more lord jesus so that they can have the saving knowledge that we have so that they can have the gift that we have they can be on our team lord and build the kingdom more greatly for you, Lord. It's in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining. Don't forget service tonight at 6 o'clock, weather permitting, and we love you. We are praying for you, and I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to get back in here, and we can hug neck, shake hands. I don't, you know, I don't know if everybody's going to be wanting to do that or not, but I want to see you. I want to be in service with you, and I can't wait. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your faithfulness. Continue to be faithful to the Lord. Amen.